Hey everyone, I'm back. I've been uh, kind of slow on posting, but that's because I've been spending a lot of time waiting on parts to print. I've been uh, assembling the stomach, the, the top, the middle, and the bottom. I've elected to do that as a unit because uh, I saw how it all fits together. And I really didn't want to be putting it together, tearing it apart, putting it together, tearing it apart. So I'm, I'm going to build it as an assembly and be done with it. Part of that uh, is, you know, uh, is a lot of uh, long parts printing. I, have, I had parts, you know, that took a, a day and six hours to print. So needless to say, it, it takes time to get all that stuff printed. But <laughs> I've been looking ahead at the legs some of those are going to take two days for parts to print. So <laughs> I, I see why this is a, a long-term project. But as part of the stomach, uh, the uh, neopixel ring is, is mounted in the, in the stomach, which is a nice feature. But it's, it's enough difference that I thought I, maybe I should just break that out as a separate subject and show you what I did. Now, this is kind of going to be a top level. Uh, probably the most important thing you'll see out of this is, is my robot lab, how I used my robot lab to do all this. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple links to uh, Steve's websites. He does an excellent job of point-to-point, of point, step-by-step, how he, how he assembled it why he did the hardware the way he did it. So I'm just going to give kudos where kudos are due and tell you to, to go look at his website. And I'm in his YouTube. And enjoy it. He'll learn a lot from it. Mine will augment it. As usual, though, I want to start off here on the on the home page of InMove and give Gal credit where credit's due. This is his design, his build, and we'll start with what he has to say about the, the NeoPixel. So let's go to Build Yours, uh, Sensors, and More, NeoPixel. Let's see what he says here. He gives you a a quick, real simple dot wiring diagram of how to hook it up. It's really not difficult to hook up. This is as good a diagram as any. I'll show you a couple of clips of mine, but this would suffice even if you didn't watch my video. But it gives you details in here that I'm not going to cover uh, until I make my decision. Uh, there's two ways, as he explains, there's two ways to, to run this NeoPixel. One is to run it through your USB ports. If you got a hub, a breakout hub, that's a convenient way of doing it. If you don't have enough USB ports, you can tell it to talk to the serial communications, to the RX, TX pins. And so he identifies all that for you right here. It gives you a nice breakout of, of the... Uh, Nervo board and uh, a nano chip in which pins are involved. So if you're interested, that information is there. Now, if I elect to do this, I'll probably do my own video to show you how I've hooked it up. But right now I'm leaning towards the USB cable because I've got the hub. You know, as long as I can get a cable routed, I'll probably use that because I get power and I get communications to the chip all in the same cable. So uh, I'm lazy. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I'm lazy. Well, why make work? But Gail gives you a, a good intro here. Let's see how uh, others have done this. I was telling you, well, before I go to Civway, let me just show you how I did mine.
Come on, mouse. My mouse wants to act up a little bit today. Sorry about that. This is the end result. This is, of course, what everybody comes to see. And so I always like to get a, a, a recorded video so if anything goes wrong during my recording sessions, I, I can at least say, hey, this is how it was supposed to work. So here I've, I've recorded and I'm playing back uh, my NeoPixel. And it's running the uh, My Robot Lab uh, rainbow feature animation I guess I should call it so that's what it's looking like in the final result and here's my NeoPixel mounted into the uh, mounting plate seen from the back side and I point this out because I have a different version than what Steve has on, on his and you'll if you watch his videos, you'll see the difference. Mine appears to be a newer version than his. And mine has more pins. In the uh, Adafruit documentation says you'll have six pins. Three of them are for in and three are for out. And they do that because you can daisy chain these rings. And they do it as a convenience so you can just run power into one, jump it over to the next, jump it over to the next. So it works out well. I have a, a bad tremor, and I'm an old man, so working on these tiny little solder plates is uh, not an easy task for me. So I'm doing things a little different than Steve. Steve will show you how he mounted all of his circuitry right in here which is a nice way of doing it but not for me so I soldered my wires on here and got out of here I'm gonna put all my components remote so it gives you a second choice to consider now there's there's three ring uh, three solder plates right here this is DN this is the control wire and this is VCC and this is ground and then you have D out which is where you can daisy chain the control to the next ring VCC and ground well because of my tremor um, I, I moved my wires apart so it was <laughs> a whole lot easier for me to solder and as you might expect this ground and this ground are electrically the same point. This VCC and this VCC are electrically the same point. And the, the D in, D out, daisy chain over to command. So I just, I just use this to my advantage to get separation between my wires to, to make things a lot easier for me to solder it. So here are the red wires on VCC. The brown wire is on... Uh, ground and the yellow wire is the digital in and since I'm not daisy chaining I didn't have to worry about using the other three terminals and here's my my nano chip now back when I was doing model railroading I ordered these nano breakout boards off the internet and they they proved to be priceless uh, they give you a nice socket, you plug your nano chip in. If you ever need to replace the nano chip, pull it out, put the next one in. You don't have to disturb your wiring. The wiring is done through terminal strips with nice screw terminal strips. So it's solderless, made it much easier to work with. So here you can see, here's my USB cable coming in. So that's how I'm powering the Nano, and that's how I'm controlling it through my robot lab, is through the USB port, the RXTX capabilities of the USB port. Now, to power my NeoPixel ring, I have 5 volt power supply over here. And here I bring 5 volts out on the red, and negative voltage out on the brown, 
and you can fire follow my wire harness so I go straight on out to the NeoPixel ring. So I'm powering my NeoPixel ring directly from a power source, external power source. Now when you do that, you also need to bring that ground from the power supply over and tie it into the ground of the nano chip so that all your voltages are at the same reference point. Zero is zero, ground is ground, and you have no floating voltages. Then the only other wire involved is the control line. Here on digital pin 6, I brought it out to a resistor and you can see it goes in to the wire harness and out to the pixel ring. And we'll get more details on that in a minute. But that's simply the way it's wired. No, no, not a lot of hardware involved here, guys. Goes together nicely. And we'll back up here and I will tell you that when I mounted my ring in into the plates here, I used my hot glue gun. I put a little dab here, 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 and here. So I've got four little spots of hot glue holding that ring in place. Nice, simple install. Now, let's see what Steve Ray, or Steve, his name is Steve Rayner. Right? He calls it Siv Ray's M-Move. And you can see he starts with a good layout here and he shows you all the components. He goes through them detail by detail, step by step. Good knowledge if you need the depth of knowledge. One thing that he does point out here is that he had a problem. When he got it all put together, uh, things didn't light up as they were expected to. He had a problem. Um, I'm not going to steal his thunder. You watch it, you'll see his problem. The interesting thing about his problem, though, is he didn't just leave you there. He came back later with a second video. Well, let's uh, get it going here. And he calls it Oh, got to get past all the commercials. We'll let them run. He calls it NeoPixel Troubleshooting. And he goes into here and he explains real well. He goes into the code and everything. And he shows you how he fixed his problem. So, I no longer consider this a problem. I call it an option. Right, let's take a look. And why I call it an option because I, th I think you might want to use it so we'll go in here I went to the Adafruit site and I looked up their um, catalog okay and so you can see here this is on the catalog page I used the part number that was on the Inmove site and when you do that you'll get a NeoPixel Ring 16 that's red, green, blue LEDs. And that's what I have, and it works like a champ. I didn't have the same problem that Steve had, and there's a reason for that. So you can buy this part direct off, and you can wire it in, and you won't, you won't have a problem at all using the MyRobot Lab software to do this but here's why Steve had a problem if we scroll on down the page here a little bit here's another NeoPixel ring 16 but it's red green blue white LEDs and if you look at the, the illustration over here you can see it running through the colors and then also it has the white feature. So this expects an additional command that the, the strictly red, green, blue ring does not have. That's what Steve purchased. Steve shows you how to modify the code in the 
I, my robot lab code to make this one work. It does an excellent job of it. So it's no longer a, a, a problem, it's a feature. Okay guys, so your choice. You can use either ring. You can do it straight out of the box or you can use Steve's modification to the software and you can add the white feature. Works out real nice. While we're on this site, I also want to go through Adafruit just a little bit further and show you their basic connections. And it goes back to the, basically the same thing Gail showed you. You bring in a 5 volt power source and you run it straight to your ring. You, you bring your ground, you bring it over to the nano board and you put it on the ground, nano, uh, nano ground. And then you bring out your, your control pin to a resistor and out to the ring. Now they're showing the use of a 470 ohm resistor. I was out of stock. That's a pretty common resistor. I used all mine. But I had a 500 ohm resistor. Don't sweat the small stuff. Close enough. Just stick, stick anything close to 470 in and you're in business. It's simply a current limiting resistor to help keep down any current surges. The next thing it shows you is an optional 1000 micro, microfarad capacitor. You can actually run this leaving this out. You can actually run this leaving the resistor out as well. And just using straight wires everything works. These are just little protective features that might save you a repair down the road. So this 1000 microfarad capacitor is just like this resistor. It's a plus or minus value, and it even tells you down here, use a, a capacitor somewhere between 100 and 1,000 microfarads. So, ballpark it. I went to my capacitor drawer. I looked and I had a whole bunch of 470 microfarad capacitors. <laughs> Almost down the middle here, right? So, I just used a 450 a microfarad capacitor and everything works fine. Again, it's just there to kind of take off any little voltage spikes that, that you might get when you power things on and off and helps protect that, that ring from uh, an input voltage spike. So it's not real critical. You can even do without it like we stated. Now, I'm going to scroll back up this page a little bit because I want you to see this menu selection over here. Right? If you go to software, you'll, you'll get some help. Now, when I did my ring, when I put it together, I had not used my robot lab very much at all. You've seen my, my prior videos. I've used it to control servos. That's all I've done is run that little servo <laughs> pot up and down and and move my servo motors. So I was getting into this NeoPixel and I thought, well, you know, this is all new territory. I'm a believer in eliminating variables, reducing complexity when introducing something new. So I went to Adafruit and downloaded their, their library for the Arduino IDE installed it in the Arduino and went to town with it. The advantage of that also, if you're not really heavy in the code, is the code is so much simpler. You can come in here, go to that software page that I was telling you about, see here, software and how to use the library, and download the file, and it, now it's stepping you through the code. And what you're doing and it says it wants by by default it wants to use pin 6 I hooked my resistor lead up to pin 6 I was ready to go all I had to do was download this code into my nano and uh, fire it up and my ring took off and did just exactly as it's described here in this program 
simple code you can go through, you can read, learn a little bit about coding, and eliminate an unknown and a complexity from my robot lab. That's what I did. Once I finished doing this, then of course, I wanted to use my robot lab. And, and I'm going to walk you through that, how I did it, and how well it works. So with that said, let, let me get here the library open. If you're going to use my robot lab, then you have to download to the to the nano chip the standard MRL com file. This is available in your my robot lab folder under resources under Arduino. You'll see the MRL com library. There it is. Download it into the into the chip and you're ready to go. Let's get that out of the way. That that code's a little bit more complex than than the simple uh, Adafruit library. That's why I, I'm showing you both ways. So you can learn from Adafruit, but now we know how to use my robot lab. We just download that code. No modifications needed unless you're using that white uh, in the ring. Then you want to go over here to uh, Steve's NeoPixel troubleshooting. He lays it out perfectly for you how to make the modification in the MRI, uh, MRL uh, COM file. Simple, straightforward, do it once, works forever. Now, let's go ahead and fire up uh, my robot lab. Before I do that, by way of review, I'm right clicking on the menu, going to device manager, and I'm looking for my COM ports. And this is a very typical way of seeing an Arduino port called out. Uh, CH340 COM5 is the COM port that I'm going to be talking out. So now I know what COM port I'm using. Let's fire up my robot lab. Now I could type in CMD, or since I've already done this before, I'll, I'll open a command file. Now, at the prompt, I'm going to put in my bat file, startup.bat. I described this in my other videos in a couple of places. If you're interested, watch my, I think I show it first in the bicep for sure. Okay, so I'm going to run my startup file and we're going to let my robot lab fire up. And as they say, go get a cup of coffee. Sometimes this can take a while. All right, so now I have my robot lab up and running. I, I went straight to runtime. And I followed Steve's uh, video to start my two services, but they wouldn't work. Okay, I tried it a couple of times, nothing worked. So I played around with my robot lab a little bit and I, I discovered a cure. The first thing you do is you go to intro and you open up the inmove main screen. The secret here appears to be that we create an object. You can see it listed over here in the column, the menu column, right? We have an I01 object. Once you do that, everything seems to work. So now I go back to, to runtime. And I need two services. I need to control an Arduino chip, and I need to control, or I need to run the code for the pixel ring, Neo pixel ring, right? So I'm gonna call my Arduino, I'm gonna just call it Nano. Why not, it's a Nano chip. 
and I use the drop down menu and come to Arduino tell it service type Arduino and I start that service and now I have over here in my menu I have the nano and the nano serial in place <coughs> then I wanted to start my service for the Neo Pixel Ring and I discovered was probably a bug that may have already been fixed but I don't know and the reason I don't know is I've frozen my development on version 525 of the, of the new software they've gone beyond that they've, they've made more improvements more changes but I'm not too terribly interested in, in moment by moment updates because I'm I'm still into the hardware you know I'm still printing parts and putting servos in so I'm not going to try to chase all these updates continuously where I'm at right now 525 works great for me I've frozen it there but at this level there's definitely probably a bug so when I type in here a new service name I'm going to use pixel and I want to give it a service type when I click in this service type I no longer get a drop-down menu it disappears but I discovered if I right-click and do a reload once I reload I can go back to runtime type in my name and now when I go to service type Oh, bingo my drop down comes back now alphabetically listed so we got to go quite a ways down here so give me a moment here to get down far enough JKLM where's Neo Neo pixel service and I'm gonna start that service and so now I have two services listed I have pixel and I have nano so I'll go to my nano service I have to tell it the correct board type I'm using a nano and I'm on COM port 5 and I'll use the default baud rate and I'll connect my little light should go green there it is so I'm successfully communicating with the Arduino chip now that I have the COM port set up and the link going, now I'll go to the Pixel service and I have to tell it what controller it's using. And I'm using the Nano. And what pin is it connected to? Well, like I told you, I'd use the Adafruit software. And so my, my control is on pin six so I'll select pin 6 as the control pin and the ring has 16 pixels in it and I'll attach that information and I get a menu service now what I'm going to do make sure everything's hooked up ready to go I'm going to use my animations here and I'm going to pick the rainbow animation now why did I pick that one <laughs> because it works <laughs> I've gone down the list here and played with some of those animations that, that they don't all work and I'm not real interested in stopping and debugging software that somebody else may have already fixed I just need one to demonstrate that everything's working so I know rainbow works so I picked it and I'm gonna say run animation and when I did that lo and behold I got a working let me turn off that upper light so you can see more color All right you see I got a working neo pixel ring changing colors nicely rotating through and like I said since this was straight out of the box red green blue ring instead of a red green blue white ring I didn't have to modify any of the uh, 
my robot lab coat, right? That coat worked just fine straight out of the box. The, the whole thing here has been pretty simple. It's not been real complex. It's hopefully short enough that you learn something. The next time you see me, I'll have this mounted in into my stomach. I'll show you all the little secrets and problems I had doing the stomach assembly and putting it all together. Why I elected to do it as one assembly. So hopefully, guys, you've learned something. I like to share, and I'm particularly grateful for everybody else that's doing their videos. That's what gives me my start. I hope to return to the group some helpful information. All right, right. See you later. Bye-bye.